A lot of people have real tension in this side of the neck or either side of the neck here, right up to the, this bone here, the mastoid process underneath the ear and all the way down to the shoulder here. So the upper fibres of traps and levator scapulae and a whole bunch of other muscles too. Now in overcome neck and back pain and stretching and flexibility we have exercises that are done standing or seated where we flex the head and the neck to the side and they both work well. But if your neck is in a really vulnerable condition and you're actually in quite a bit of discomfort at the moment, I'm going to show you a version of the exercise which instead of taking the head to the side, which is the normal way of stretching these muscles here, we're actually going to contrive to pull the shoulder down away from the ear. This gives you the same kind of traction effect on the arm and the shoulder that the seated exercise does that we use in overcome neck and back pain, but with one great advantage. The whole of the back of the head and the neck is actually supported by the floor and effectively the muscles are more relaxed as a result. And this is what it looks like. The first thing is to lie down and to extend the back of your head along the floor so that this part of your neck here is as relaxed as you can get it. Then reach down and hold your foot like this and I use a grip like this. Don't use a, a thumb and finger grip, you won't be strong enough to hold on but if you wrap your whole hand around the front of the ankle like this you will be able to. That's the second point and the third point is we then reach this arm up here like this not to pull the head to the side but just to act as a barrier so that when we pull the shoulder down away from the ear using the foot, which we'll do in a moment, the head actually stays still. So just get used to that sensation and make sure that the shoulder is resting on the floor as well and that your face is facing the ceiling. Then, relaxing completely, use this little toe creeping action like this to draw the shoulder and the arm and the hand away from the ear you'll probably feel a very strong sensation in the arm and that's good, that's brachial plexus itself being stretched. Now the contraction here is to draw the shoulder to the ear as though you were shrugging, which is what I'm doing now. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. I relax everything, I take a breath in. And on a breath out, creep the foot even further away. Now for most people that will be a strong enough stretch in the side of the neck. But if you've done this once or twice and you need to make it even stronger, then press the head towards you as you look at the picture here, or if you, if you like, towards the hand that's holding the foot. Again for five seconds or so, stop, breathe in. And then the second re-stretch is actually done by moving the foot even further away from the ear. So what's happening here is that all the muscles of the neck are being stretched but without us having to bend the neck at all. Now if you find on the other hand that you want to be able to, that you would like to try taking the head into flexion as well, then what you do is you gently draw the head away from the shoulder that's being pulled down of the foot and you can then add yet another contraction which is to press the head back to the starting position as I'm doing now. You stop, you take a breath in and on a breath out, you can take the head a little bit further away from that shoulder like this. So really, if you think about it, there are a number of contractions and a number of ways of achieving the final stretch position. And to come out of this, run your hand over the top of the head and use the fingers to gently push the head back to the starting position. Because all of the neck muscles are completely relaxed in this, you should be able to get a fantastic amount of movement and a great feeling of relief in the neck. And now we'll do the other side and follow along and just see what the other side feels like. And when you're doing any exercise that permits comparison of left and right, note which one is tighter and do that a second time. Okay, so I'm going to reach my hand down and hold the ankle as before. Stretch the other leg out. Reach this arm around and hold the side of my head. Don't pull the head the first time, rather walk the feet away to get the stretch. The contraction is to try and shrug the shoulder of that hand up to the ear. Stop, relax, redouble your grip, take a breath in. And on a breath out, stretch the arm down a little bit further by walking the foot even further away. Then if you need to, you can do a, a contraction with the neck itself, pressing as you're looking away from you, so towards my right hand. Stop, relax and very gently either, as I'm doing, move the head to the side away from that shoulder or you can walk the foot further away or you can even try both but it will be very strong if you do both. 
and hold that for a while. Do the other contraction, which would be the shoulder shrugging contraction. And once you're finished, stop, let the head go, run the hands over the head like this and return your head to the starting position using your fingers. Then let go of the leg and relax. And don't forget to stretch the tight side a second time. We've just stretched the neck and lateral flexion, which is an indirect stretch for the scalenes. I want to show you a version which, by adding a tiny amount of rotation and extension, allows you to stretch the scalenes more directly and relatively safely. The danger in stretching the scalenes is that when you stretch the scalenes on this side, these muscles here can cramp on you. The version that we use by lying on the cushion, the cushion underneath the shoulders and having the head slightly below the level of the shoulders and having the head supported by the floor is much safer in this regard and this is what it looks like and it basically follows the same template as the last one we did where we're going to try and pull the shoulder away from the ears as the means of stretching these muscles and that's because the scalenes, the anterior and medial, medial scalenes that we're interested in attach to the first rib and when the shoulders pulled down the ribs themselves are pushed away from the attachment points up here. So this is what it looks like. Put your shoulders on a cushion of a suitable height and when you're doing this for the first time don't use the cushion that's too high and then hold your head like this and lower yourself into position like this so that you can see now my head is slightly below my shoulders and then I'm going to reach my foot like this as we did before and hold it with that hook grip and as again as before hold the side of the head like this but this time I'm going to turn the head very slightly away from you so now as a result the neck is both slightly rotated and it's slightly in extension as well and then we use the same foot creeping action to bring on the stretch now for me today that's very strong in this area here and you may be able to see that and the scalenes are just under here, in behind here in fact, in underneath this long thick muscle called sternocleidomastoid. The contraction is to shrug the shoulder up to the ear as I'm doing now, and the restretch, after I take a breath in, is to slowly creep the foot further away. Now that's actually a very strong stretch today, and so that's where I'm going to leave it. Hold the final position and Tell yourself that you're going to let those muscles in the side of the neck actually relax a bit as mine are just starting to do now. And hold the final position for at least a few breaths in and out. To come out of it, take the hand off the head like this and then bring your foot back and then move the shoulder up and down. And then when you're ready, you can either lift your head up with your neck muscles as I just did then, or you can reach both hands to behind your head like this and lift the neck up whichever feels safest and I'm going to show you what this looks like from the other side now. And to reach down and hold the other foot, stretch this leg out, reach this arm up to the side of the neck, turn very slightly towards the camera like this and then walk the foot away. I'm much less tight on this side today. The contraction is to shrug the shoulder of the hand holding the foot. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. I take a breath in and on a breath out slowly walk the foot a bit further away. Absolutely critical in any strong neck exercise like this is to actually let yourself be stretched. It's a very strong temptation to hold the tension in and not let yourself be stretched. So let, let yourself, will yourself in fact, to allow that shoulder to move away from the, from the ear and you'll find that the end result is very good indeed. Then. Turn the head back, press it back to the start position, let go of the foot, reach the hand behind you like this and bring the chin into the chest and lift your head up. As before, whenever you're comparing left and right, if you find one side tighter as today my left side was tighter, then go back and stretch that side a second time. This should give you tremendous relief in the side of the neck here and possibly any pain down in your arms or wrists or even the sides of the elbows here that might come from thoracic outlet compression syndrome. Try it, it's a great exercise.